I want more people to see themselves as makers, not just consumers. To consider themselves to be creative, productive people. And that that is something that's important to them. Now, I, I can't necessarily take credit for where this has gone, but I do think I initiated something which seems to resonate with people. And it, it's almost that my belief is this was once time a mainstream idea in our culture, and it had moved out to the fringe. And I'm trying to bring it back to be something that's part of our cultural identity, something that's part of our economic identity, to make things and create things. And that's why I, I think the, the thing that I've tried the most to do is to expand the notion of who gets to participate in this maker movement. That I really want everybody, every child, every adult, to, be, to see themselves as a maker. I don't necessarily care whether they're doing electronics. They might be a cook, a gardener. They might do woodworking. But we have this opportunity to integrate lots of different skill sets, lots of different mindsets into this maker movement. I see it as a, as a participatory sport, as something that, it's something you do, you don't watch. And if you're at Maker Faire, you get to interact with makers, you get to learn from them, you get to make something yourself. This is a photo of, of the Boston Marathon taking off. And I've always thought, uh, you know, a few years ago I was thinking about it, what else looks like a movement? that sort of has similar parallels to the maker movement. And I came up with marathoning. You know, there are more marathoners today than ever. And mostly they run for personal reasons. They're amateurs. They do it because it means something to them. And I think that's where I start with the maker movement. It's, it's something for, for wonderfully great reasons people believe is valuable to them personally. And it turns out when you start connecting that together, you create a community of makers, and that community begins to collaborate. And, and that's the, the two words I'd like to make sure I stick in your brain. It's not about technology like 3D printers, and it's, it's not about necessarily maker fair or maker spaces, but really the sense of a maker community, and it's a community that collaborates, um, in, in, I think informally, in new ways. I, I'm just going to present it briefly, but I, I've kind of thought of the maker uh, uh, community as segmented in, in three ways. You know, it's, it's sort of the people that come to Maker Faire as attendees, often they're what I call zero to maker. They would like to become makers, but they don't have the skills yet to do much, and, but they're interested. They want to be in there. Um, maker to maker is the community itself. Once you have a project, you become a maker. You get to talk about what you're doing, what you're working on. And then finally, maker to market, which is relatively speaking, uh, 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 just uh, you know, 12 to 15, maybe 20 percent of the mar uh, of makers who really want to either they work professionally in this, or they want to bring a product to market and say they use Kickstarter and various methods to do that. But what's driving, I think, the, the maker movement is cheap technology, accessible technology. Um, this is a, a, a cover earlier in the year for us on. You know, look at these computer, these Raspberry Pi boards for five dollars, a nine-dollar board, and and a three-dollar board. Um, it, it is dramatically changing. The, you know, not only the form factor, but but also sort of the price point of what you can do, and invites people to treat, you know, the, the, these microcontrollers as almost disposable items that they could put them in a project, and if the project blows up, well, it was only a three-dollar board. So they are willing and able to try new things. And, and so there's just a proliferation of, of these components, whether you find them online through a DigiKey or a McMaster car, or in places like Shenzhen and, and in Tokyo and Akihabara, where they have all kinds of components. Um, the other thing, you know, while I talk about in many ways the democratization of technology around some things like Arduino or 3D printing, it's also about the democratization of learning. That means that if if, if it's easier to get access to the tools of production, it's also easier to learn how to use them. And one of the drivers for that learning, one of the on-ramps, I believe, for, that, for the maker movement, 
is, are called makerspaces. I was at MIT yesterday. They have over 40 makerspaces on campus. This is uh, in the Mechanical Engineering Building, and that's Lucy, who's a, a BattleBots contestant, uh, but she works in this makerspace here. And it's giving students uh, the ability to create and make uh, even on their own. And some of those spaces at MIT you could use if you were doing research or in a class. These kind of maker spaces, though, you could use for any reason, and they're typically busy at night, and sometimes late at night. 